We're setting up camp now in one of the most spectacular camping locations I think I've ever been to. Uh, there's obviously shots right here on the doorstep. We've had a great afternoon. The hike today has also been pretty fantastic in terms of the scenery and not too hard as well. It's I think eight or nine kilometers. Uh, so we're all feeling uh, on pretty, pretty good form at the moment. And we've just had a, a long swim as well and a chance to wash all our clothes. So uh, feeling fresh. <laughs> just taken a short walk up a hill from our camp this is a route that i've done before but we're in a slightly different location and it's revealed a view that i've not seen a variation on a shot that i've actually taken many times before and so that's really exciting for me it allows me to do something different potentially tomorrow morning because i think we're going to continue our hike uh, for, for sunset to, to a different location uh, this probably will be quite a challenging spot to shoot though uh, because it's going to be in shadow as the sun rises. The sun rises somewhere over here um, behind these uh, buttressed features so there's going to be some really really deep shadows in the image and a lot of contrast uh, and that can obviously make shooting pretty difficult but nevertheless I think it's something that I'm going to try tomorrow. We've stopped off to shoot the hills of Lesotho. There's absolutely stunning side light at the moment. And this is 90 degrees to the sun. So it's an important thing to have a polarizer in your arsenal, particularly if you're shooting distant images because they really cut through the haze. And you'll be able to compare this video to the shot that I show you in a second. Um, another point here is that the cliffs over here are absolutely majestic. They're incredibly dramatic. But a big part of hiking the Drakensberg is these stunning hills in Lesotho and it's difficult to get them in good light. It really shows their lovely lines and, and the level of repetition and actually this particular view is looking to the valley of the Orange River which is I believe the longest river in South Africa so there's a nice story there too. Uh, and towards the sun I won't show you but there's some nice sun rays. Uh, coming through so it's a bit difficult now deciding what to do because we have uh, I think 40 minutes or so until uh, sunset uh, but still quite a bit of uh, distance to cover to get to our viewpoint at Upunshwana. So here is Rockery's Tower. We've raced down here and the sunset has just beaten us, but that's going to be okay because we can still get some good shots here. The best viewpoint is just walking out along there. That gives you a clear view of these fluted lines here. I keep using the word fluted. That's a word of, word of the trip, I think. Um, and then these are the Mwani needles. But what I'm really excited about, actually, if I just darken the exposure here, is this scene. So if you uh, look in the direction of the escarpment there that is the devil's tooth in the eastern buttress where we started our hike and these clouds are absolutely fantastic so what i want to do is sort of frame maybe a four by five ish frame particularly if the uh, color of these clouds changes uh, to create a really minimalist frame it's all about the sky but the mountains are just going to anchor the shot and provide that focal point So I didn't exactly give these guys permission to stand here. How far do you reckon the drop is, guys? Uh, 700 meters. <laughs> okay, I don't think it's quite seven. No, I don't know, it's gotta be at least 500 meters. Yeah, anyway, this is uh, one hell of a location. I mean, those vertical cuts through the rock there are pretty incredible. Um, the sunset 
well, it's nothing special. Uh, and it's maybe a little bit hazy to get really nice twilight colours, but we're going to wait so that the light becomes more directional to light up this ridge. Um, I've already got some shots here that I'm quite fond of, so I don't know if I'll shoot. I may do. Um, but it's been a pretty great day. Uh, our best so far in the Drakensberg, probably, um, because of all the fantastic hiking and views and, and a great start to the day as well. So good view to finish on and we will wander back in the darkness and then go and have our dinner. There is a 50-50 chance of this sunrise being an absolute sensation. We've come up to the viewpoint uh, that we saw yesterday, or at least we've tried to. We've actually overshot it in the dark. So we now need to go down slope to find the, the viewpoint that we had. But it's looking super, super promising. Um, so I'm really hoping that this uh, light's gonna do justice to this view. It's time to find a composition and I'm stood on the edge of where I now should be, where we were yesterday. Uh, the other guys are just over here looking for foregrounds of their own. Obviously the star, if the light happens, is going to be this ridge here. The sun is rising over here, so I would expect pretty good relief out of uh, this ridge um, because it should be more or less side lit. One thing that I find detracts from the view is uh, this mound in the middle here. Uh, that to me is a bit of a distraction. It's too much contrast and it fights against the direction of the lines uh, on the other side of the mountain. So I'm thinking about moving back with my camera and getting a little lower, maybe even including these bushes just here and shooting something like that. Cause that to me simplifies the view in quite a pleasing way. Um, let's see maybe something like that this uh lot of grasses on the right is actually quite nice so yeah maybe i'm going to set up with something like that and and see how it goes uh, anyway i definitely need to set up because time is now against me we're off to a good start as you can see there's a bit of color in this cloud above one thing that's tempting is to recompose and try and find a way of dragging this color into the shot but for me uh, i'd rather keep this as a landscape frame frame something like this uh, than uh, try to include that cloud. If you did, I think it would probably be best to shoot portrait with the sort of V at the base of the frame, if that makes sense. But uh, I'm in it for the, the landscape frame this time. Uh, and so I really need some color uh, a bit lower down in the sky. But actually what I'm hoping for is direct sunlight on these crags because the dark sky above will make for a lot of contrast. And then I would simply frame to make sure that there was no clear sky at the top of the frame to enhance that sense of drama. It's just starting to happen now I think so this could be really really good. You can actually see that I've set my uh, camera up now where I was using a foreground previously because to me that was just too strong that bunch of grass is there so I've moved forward just to simplify the foreground so that's well that's my frame you can't really tell there but uh, something simple and I'm kind of using this bunch of grasses on the edge there to block that uh, ugly bump of rock. So it's time to focus on shooting now. You can see some beautiful red light hitting the cliffs just there. Let's just hope it comes round and hits the rest of it. <laughs> Unfortunately, that light never really materialized. The sun half came out, um, 
But I do have some shots that I think are going to work. I think I've made some slight compositional errors, uh, but I'll have to wait until I see everything now on the computer and, and give them uh, an edit because they're all exposure brackets, so it's pretty hard to judge how the tonal balance will be at the end. Uh, but still, it was, it was a nice morning and, and great to see this view and good to come home with, with something. Uh, it looks like from now on in, the weather's going to be a bit more unsettled. So we may uh, change our plans around a bit, but uh, we'll get down now and have our coffee and breakfast as we do every morning and come up with a plan. And that was the end of our time at Rockeries Pass. Uh, so that was the start of our fifth day in the Drakensberg and I still have three more videos to get out. So I'm really sorry about the uh, the big delay to, to getting this one done. Um, I've actually moved house uh, between the last video and this one uh, and uh, decorated this office that you see here. So I have a, a nice place to work, which is great. Uh, so hopefully I will be more productive, but of course I've got my uh, summer tours coming up. So I'm spending quite a lot of time in Iceland over the next month and a half. And actually next week I'm off backpacking for a week, uh, first in the Lake District and then Scotland. So I'm gonna find it difficult to get the rest of these videos uh, finished and of course I'm probably going to create a backlog in the in the uh, intervening time. Um, if you are interested in coming with me to the Drakensberg, my previous trip that I announced has actually already sold out. Um, so I have added some extra dates which will be uh, visiting a section of the Drakensberg that you'll actually see in the following uh, videos. Um, so please do have a look at that on my website if you think you'd like to have an adventure in one of the most spectacular landscapes in the world. Um, but as usual, I'm going to uh, discuss the images that I captured over that 24-hour period in the uh, Rockeries area and uh, talk about a few that actually I didn't show on this video. So let's get started. This was taken partway into our hike after we'd set up camp and it looks into the hills of Lesotho. And I've really struggled to photograph this alternative landscape. Um, obviously the Drakensberg is known for its cliffs and pinnacles, but the other side of the cliffs are these fantastic hills with their interlocking lines. Uh, and, but you really need the light to reveal these kind of structures. And, uh, and obviously I had that on this particular evening, so I'm really pleased with this shot. Um, one thing that uh, really adds to it is the, the story of the image. So this is the Orange River, the longest river in South Africa, and its source is just two kilometers from where I'm standing. And there's also a settlement, a Basutu settlement, down at the bottom of the frame here. Um, so you can see uh, there's a, a grass hutted a uh, grass roofed hut here uh, and, and a couple at the back um, and they brought their animals down uh, at dusk uh, so that they can sleep in, in their huts and have the animals nearby uh, so I love that extra dimension to this image. This is a wider view uh, of that scene so actually you can see the previous shot is somewhere in here and it really works much better in black and white than it does in color thanks to the structure and the line that, that exists in the shot. Uh, so you've got these sweeping lines from the cirrus above and, and the bubbling angry cumulonimbus here that's actually producing some rain off to the left. Uh, and then there's all this repetition again in the hills. So it does work well as a black and white. I will show you the, the color as well. Um, which is a little washed out and I could add more contrast um, to, to make it pop a bit more but actually it starts to look a bit artificial and the colours fall apart so I think this is one for black and white. Unfortunately I don't really shoot black and white so uh, that's not an image that's going to end up in my portfolio but, but fun to, uh, to photograph and give it a quick edit to black and white all the same. This one I didn't show in the video because when I was shooting towards the sun, the haze was so great that the video didn't really show very much. Um, but with photographs, you can really work the contrast and black points to cut through haze, which is what I've done here. Um, so I've added a lot of contrast and uh, set, a, set a black point, which basically gives you the effect of being a lot further forward and almost in the air um, to get a, a view like this. Um, and 
this shows the Nwani cutback, which can be very difficult to photograph if you want to show both sides of the cutback, which this particular perspective does. And the haze between the front side of this canyon and the back side adds a sense of depth because not only do you have a contrast difference between the foreground and the background, but there's also a color difference. So warmer tones tend to come forward, blue tones go backwards. So there is a sense of depth, even though this is quite a heavily compressed telephoto scene. So I'm really happy with this one. And this is the Anueni Pinnacles, which is where we started our hike that day. So again, a little bit of a story there, uh, just with the sun skimming over the tops of these pinnacles. So if you want to get the strongest rays possible, then you really want to be looking very close to where the sun is. And it was only just out of frame in this shot. Uh, this is perhaps a little bit too simple to uh, to drop into my portfolio, but I but I do like it, and it's a nice record shot to have of the trip. Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll I'll change my mind on that in future. But again, it was um, I added a lot of contrast to to see through the haze to reveal this scene. And this is the uh, sunrise, which actually uh, worked out pretty nicely in the end. I chose to leave out the uh, the red cliffs that were out of frame here simply because they were too colorful for the rest of the scene. I felt they, they drew the attention too much. I mean, you can see the, the saturation of these little areas here. Um, and there was sort of a whole cliff of, of that color. So it would have been too much for the shot. Um, but compositionally, I'm pretty, pretty happy with this. Um, I think it was a good idea to try to block out this mound uh, with these with these grasses here. Um, that helps to break up that shape and uh, and stops it from being distracting. I did unfortunately make a technical error here. You can see on the left hand side, um, the image is slightly soft whilst on the right it isn't. Well, that's because my lens uh, didn't have a completely flat focal plane. It's a problem that I'm aware of when I'm shooting at longer focal lengths, but I forgot to uh, to deal with that problem here. Um, so there is that difference, which is uh, a bit unfortunate, it sort of uh, spoils the image a little for me. But hopefully this is a viewpoint that I can come back to in future, um, because actually, although this light is quite interesting, there's something about the color palette that I'm not really happy with. Maybe I'd prefer something a bit simpler. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll hopefully have the opportunity to return here. And I've saved this image for last as probably the, the failure of, of the trip. It's really important to have ideas when you're on location and then embrace them, just run with them, see what uh, comes out. Uh, and here, this is the Eastern Buttress. It's a well-known feature in the Drakensberg and the Devil's Tooth is this uh, spike just here. Um, so I wanted to use that as my focal point and create this idea of almost like a, a thought bubble um, coming out of, of the eastern buttress there, like um, dotted clouds that, that enlarge as they get, uh, as they, uh, get higher in the image. Um, but the continuity between these clouds just isn't quite there. This cloud comes right the way off to the left, and you get more of a vertical and then a diagonal than you do the kind of sweeping S shape that I was ori originally hoping for. And aside from that, it's maybe just a little bit boring. So... Um, it was it was a fun shot to try. I was excited about it at the time, but I think looking at it in retrospect, it just doesn't quite hold its own. Um, but nevertheless, you have to try these things sometimes uh, to to learn what works and what doesn't. Uh, but please do stay tuned for my next video whenever that uh, that appears. Um, that was probably the the best day of our trip was this the, the following day because the weather did break down. We had some fantastic stormy weather. Um, so we all got pretty excited uh, photographing a pretty fantastic view um, as, as clouds rolled in uh, and we had a bit of an inversion in, appear out of nowhere. So uh, please do check out that following video.